So Doodly has had numerous tiny updates and bug fixes and one in particular has been the ability to animate bitmap images so you can animate the drawing of detailed photos with less hassle. So in this video I'm going to show you how to take a photo and render the image as a piece of artwork and build the animation in Doodly. Now this was inspired by a Doodly designer, Rusty Church, who shared an animated video of a photo he took in his Jeep with his DOG. Sorry Rusty, you've got dots there, I presume that's how it's pronounced. Rusty's video is a great demonstration of how you can take Doodly that one step further with your animations, so big thanks to Rusty for sharing that. If you use Doodly and want to share tips and tricks with others, check out the Doodly design group in Facebook. The users there are very supportive. Now when I created my last animation, it, I was up until 3 a.m. Um, with about six hours of grafting, so I might miss out a few hours of the recording if that's okay with you. Uh, before we go any further, a quick plea to like and subscribe this video. It's all I have until I get my second vaccination jab. What you will need is one photo, and a photo editing app. I'll be using paint.net as it is an, an easy to use photo editing app, perfect for this example. But you can use any app you wish. The website for paint.net is getpaint.net. The app is completely free, but you need to click the .pdn button, not the Windows 10 that takes you to Microsoft Store and charges you for it. .pdn gives you the app for free. Click the link, it downloads the software in a zip file, just install it and then run the app. Click the file menu and open the photo you want to animate. I'm going to open this Yellowstone National Park photo. I will make two copies of this photo. Stage one will be an outline sketch and stage two of the animation will be the final coloured result. So, I'm going to display the Layers panel in Paint.net and create a new layer which will go above the photo. Okay, I'll double click on each layer and give them a name so I know which is which. The bottom one will be named Colour and I'll give it the American spelling today. The top one will be Drawing. Now, I need to select the entire photo from the colour layer at the bottom, copy it and paste it onto the top drawing layer. So I'll have two photos. Um, I'm going to need to select the colour layer first. Go to Edit Menu, select All, and then Edit Menu again and Copy. Then click the top layer and paste it. So Edit Menu, Paste. There are shortcut keys for all these commands, but I want to use the menu to give a more visual demonstration. Okay, finally, deselect the image, edit menu, deselect. Now, the tick boxes to the right of each layer just shows and hides the image on that layer. Disable the top layer. We're going to apply a colored effect to the photo on the bottom colored layer. And this would be your final color filled in effect and I'll select the effects menu and I'm going to go into the artistic option and apply an oil painting effect. You can choose ink if you prefer or any other one. Um, in fact experiment with all of them. I'm going to use oil painting as this one gives a better pastel effect that I want. With the oil painting I can adjust the size of brush from small to large. The coarseness affects the level of paint detail so you may want to consider keeping this low at first if you have trees, sand, gravel in the photo. Otherwise you'll be forced to spend more time creating animation effects to handle that level of detail. Uh, there'll be a lot of paths drawn in doodly. So adjust this to suit your needs and click OK. Now enable the top layer again and we will apply a sketching effect to this top layer. And this will be animated first before the colour. So select the effects menu, artistic, and this time I'm going to uh, select the pencil sketch. With pencil sketch I can adjust the pencil size. Thicker ones allow for a true doodly image style. 
uh, while thinner ones make for a high detail sort of artwork. How much detail you want is chosen by the range option. The higher the range, the more animation you may need to add again to draw each little area of detail. So again, keep this low for now, but you can experiment. So I will click OK. At this point, I'm going to save the first of the two images on its own, which is the drawing image. I'm going to turn the bottom layer off first and then go to File Menu and Save As. I'll save this as a ping image, so ping there, and put 01 at the end of my file name. This is stage one of the animation. When you click Save, there may be an additional image options and this affects the quality of the result. I'm gonna select Auto Detect here and I'm gonna flatten the layer on top of the bottom one. This is only temporary so that the sketched image is saved. Okay, now I'm going to click Undo on the Edit menu uh, and that will undo the flatten action to bring back the bottom layer. And I'm gonna enable the bottom layer again Now I'm going to combine the two layers to show the final artistic impression of the photo. To do this, I will double click the top layer. In the options, I'm going to drop the opacity to apply a level of transparency to the top drawing layer. This is just enough so that the color bleeds through. You can change the blending effect using the blend mode. Definitely worth experimenting with the blends as you can create some really great effects. I'm going to use reflect as it will give me the pastel effect that I want in my result. Now I will click the top layer first and then save another image of the two together. So I'm going to click File Menu, Save As. I'll put a 0 to at the end of the file name. This is stage two of the animation. I'm going to go with the same options as the first image, especially the flatten. I'm going to flatten this. It's important. If the image changes after you click flatten, just go back and check to make sure that you have selected the top layer first before saving it. That's it. The photo's done, time to animate. Open up Doodly and create a new video. Add your video title and choose the resolution you want. I'm gonna go for a high res video. Let's go to the props library and click add new prop. Browse to your two new images and open them into your library. Drag your first drawing image onto the scene and set the size you want. And before I forget, and I know I will, we're going to apply the video scene settings. So pick your drawing hand. Okay, uh, we need to turn off the scene transitions and turn the erase mode off. Okay, I'm going to set my animation for this layer to 40 seconds and this is just to help with the preview um, of the animations later on. Click the image and select the edit tool, pencil. If you do not see a pencil, either Doodly is not permitting that image to custom animate. There could be too much detail or the image is compressed or encrypted, which tends to be uh, the case with JPEGs and other bitmap formats, so avoid using them um, if that's the case. Uh, use ping like I have. Okay, in edit mode, don't be shy to really zoom in. It does make easier control for the detail. To add a new path in your drawing, just click new path. You can click inside that new path block below and 
type a new name just to make it easier to identify each path and then you click on your drawing to add new nodes or points little dots there blue dots are for the nodes within the path you're working on and red ones are ones that are in a path that's not been selected just click around the drawing to add points or nodes and if you want to adjust one of them just carefully hover over one and your pointer will change from a thin black crosshair to a sort of four-way pointing arrow and just drag the node around the place now the animation effect greatly depends on your paths each node or dot represents an equal amount of time in the animation duration the further apart your nodes or dots the faster the hand has to move to reach it too far apart and the drawing detail will appear before the hand even gets there and it looks silly it totally degrades the animation effect so don't go crazy with the distances second tip is to think of each node or dot as a one second in time as you drive a car the further apart the dots are the faster your car is driving to reach the next dot so what happens when you take a corner at high speed you go off the road if you want to change the path direction gradually reduce the distance between nodes first before you change direction it's like slowing down to take a corner and if you really want the animation to look like sketching painting or coloring try zigzag motions in short distances across that same area and that will show the hand moving back and forth this makes for a great animation effect but it will take at least twice as long to create the animation paths so more detail gives better effect but requires more coffee Valium and binge TV in the background. The last tip is if you use a right-handed drawer, draw from left to right. And for a left-handed drawer, draw from right to left. Sometimes the image appears before the hand animation completes. So the image will appear underneath the drawing hand and the viewer will never notice. Also, if it helps, if you're getting stuck to where do I start first, grab a piece of paper and actually start to draw the image. Just notice where you start first. Did you outline the image first or did you start with shading? Even if you're not an artist, just feel the, the natural motion that you do. I tend to start with objects at the foreground first so I get a better idea of where everywhere else will go. Also, horizons tend to be one of the first, earliest things people do. So remember to draw your horizons if you have any and make it more realistic. The rest is just constant dot to dots with a lot of patience. And I recommend you save every few minutes. Doodly can be known to crash sometimes. So I'm going to start with the posts for the sign and I'll I would never draw an entire outline around a large post. So I'm going to draw a small section and then sketch the area and then repeat that. So I want the animation to reflect my style, if you like. Every person approaches artwork very differently. And any artist who gives you advice when they see your finished product, take it on board and learn for next time. It's vital, valuable goldmine information. I actually nagged my daughter for tips and tricks um, as her artwork is amazing and uh, she gave me some excellent advice. I might even hire her out to the Doodly group. When your drawing animation path is finished, save the current progress Click the image and select the settings gear cog and make a note of the X, Y, width and height values as we're going to apply these onto the two new images later. Go across the scene timeline and add a new scene. Add the drawing in image again uh, on the new scene. Select the settings gear cog and apply the X, Y, width and height values you noted from the last image. 
Make sure the duration for this image layer is set to zero. We want it to appear seamlessly as if it was the same drawing image. Now drag the colouring image onto the scene and make sure you click no add so it does not replace the other image. Go to the settings gear cog and again add the same X, Y, width and height values. Set the image layer's duration to the duration you'd like. I'm going to set mine to 40 seconds and we'll start all over again with the path animation. If you've been patient and, and awake, you should have now finished two layers. Save the image and export it as a video and we'll have a look at the finished result. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful in some way. Uh, please give me some comments, ask me some questions. If there's anything in particular you want me to cover, I do mainly Office 365, but I've been sort of keen on doing doodly work as well. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, anything else I can find or put into social media. Otherwise, stay safe and have fun. Mm -hmm.